The next step is assembling. Now let's go over to the assembly module. If you noticed, I referred to these previous modes as modules. I call them the materials module, the sections module, the profiles module. Maybe module isn't the technically correct word. These are more like different modes within a module. If you want to know the modules, you click up here in the module menu and you see part. Now parts is in the part module, whereas materials, sections, and profiles are all in the property module. So I sometimes use these names interchangeably. So you should be aware of that. It's not a big deal. You can go ahead and call it what you want. But we're going to go into assembly by double clicking on it. And now we are in the assembly view. It's blanked out the viewport because in the assembly view, we have not yet imported any parts. So the assembly itself is blank, even though we have parts that can be imported. Every time you run a simulation in Abacus, you need to create an assembly. Uh, this sort of makes more sense when you have more than one part, because then you can assemble them together, position them correctly, apply the correct set of constraints. But in our case, we only have the one part, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's just the way it works. Even if we have only one part, we got to create an assembly with that one part. If we expand out the assembly container, we see instances, position constraints, features, sets, surfaces, etc. And you'll learn more about uh, things like sets in later uh, tutorial videos. In this one, we're only going to go with instances. We don't need any posi position constraints because we're only importing one object, so we're not going to be positioning other parts with respect to that one. I'm going to double click on instances. Gives me the create instance window. And it fills out the parts in this list over here. We only have the one. And it's showing me a preview of what that would look like in the assembly window. The only real option here is to choose whether you want your instance to be dependent, which means you mesh the part, or independent which means you mesh the instance. And we're going to take a deeper look at meshing in later videos. In this one, we're going to go with dependent, which means when we create the mesh later, we're going to be creating it in here in the part itself, as opposed to creating the mesh in the assembly. This has advantages and disadvantages, and we'll talk about those later. But just so you know, you cannot have a mesh on a part and import that in, and then import another instance of that part and mesh it in the assembly. You either choose one or the other, and this time we're going to go with mesh on the part. I'm going to click on OK, and there you see our part has been instanced into the assembly, and it's also listed here in the instances tree. If you look in features, you see it's created a coordinate system with it, but we're not going to worry too much about that in this tutorial video. I'm going to collapse the assembly, and we're going to move on to the next item, which is steps.